Hey y'all, so another Carl War here. <laughs> We're starting out with this Hulkling on Path 8. This is a good placement for Hulkling, but Hulkling is also one of Carl's best matchups. And so we're basically just going to hit him until he falls over, throwing special ones. If we see an opening for a heavy, we'll take it. We'll hit into his block to clear flourish where we can. But for the most part, we're just going to assume we are not blocking. We definitely don't want to take hits because of those snowballing furies. We don't really have a way around them. Like I said, we're just playing on how good of a matchup this is for Carl, and we're going to hit him until he falls over. That was not intended to be a block. You know, inputs. It happens. Um, really don't want to hit him again, since he has two flourish. I probably could have hit into his block, but I didn't want to be wrong, accidentally land a real hit and send him red. That is my definition of a bad time. He goes unblockable there, but I've practiced that dex in the corner enough that I am able to dex the last hit where he's unblockable. We go ahead, throw our special three, and as I've said before, I think the special three on Carl is already a little bit underrated, because it's less flashy, but the fact that it, while this long pause is active, your crit rate goes up, means that you can do that. And it's just, it spikes his damage so much by giving you more reliable critical bursts. And that just really cannot be undersold. It's not as much crit rating as you get from a heavy while the opponent isn't stunned, but it's really, really good. Now, this fight is just going to be hilarious because we're going to block a lot. Um, and we don't really have a counter to Gore's physical hits because we're in magma form. But because this is power efficiency and we really don't want to deal with overlapping encroaching um, corruptions, we push him to the special two, and then we push him to the special two again. And a reminder, the special two places 10 armor breaks. Um, for every armor break we're immune to, we're going to get 90 morph charges, which means that we instantly cap out. I go ahead and medium light medium there, even though I know it risks um, him throwing a special one. Because if I can medium light medium with a full uh, 600 morph charges, I figure the fight is close enough to over, as you can tell by the fact that it's already over as I'm speaking, that it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what he does, I'm good. Moving on to Tigra, this one is a little bit scarier because Carl is a good counter to Hazard Shift, but not a particularly strong one to Tigra. So that is why we are using the one uh, pre-fight from Mr. Fantastic to just make Mystic Dispersion a little bit less of a problem. We're playing super aggressive just with combos uh, while she's in Incinerate phase so that we can take full advantage of the pause there. But even in the shock phase, it's important to remember that the way Tigra works is she goes unblockable, right? But the unblockable is a buff. So as it flickers on and off, that's going to count as a buff ending, and that is itself going to trigger our form pause. So that's going to be the primary way that we get through shock mode, which is nice because just there we did a full combo into her in incinerate and nothing happened. <laughs> Don't love when that happens, but that's okay. This fight is already going really well. We've landed some crit bursts on our heavies, which is why I'm bothering to counter there. I also find heavies are very helpful at getting Tigra to throw her specials. And yeah, there we go. Of course, land a bunch of incinerates, but yeah, that is exactly how I would approach that fight. So we move on to Nimrod. This one is going to be really, really easy because even though the armors are going to cause us to glance, and if we glance, we can't crit, and therefore we can't land our critical bursts, we are also going to be immune to bleed pretty much every time we make contact with Nimrod. And so that is going to mean that we just do not have to worry about form upkeep at all. It's going to be really easy to get refined and stay refined, and as soon as we're refined, then at least our 
at least our base version of the bursts is going to get through every time because their ability accuracy cannot be modified anymore so they ignore that aspect of glancing and then that basically means that we are just going to be doing consistent damage and we're going to be paused and that is all we need because you see that even though we're not landing crits here it doesn't matter we're still chipping away at nimrod's health pool we don't really care about anything else now, one thing here that I think is actually a bug, um, I believe I showed off in this fight, is that I go for the medium light medium here, right? Yes, I do. And even though it doesn't spend my morph charges to apply the vulnerability, we get the regen. Um, I'll be honest, that is a coding error on my part. That means that I tied the regen to listen for the wrong trigger. Ooh, you did see one critical burst in there, and it was gorgeous. Another one on the special one. And so that probably will need to be fixed. Uh, at this point, it may not even be until May, I'll be honest. But yeah, that long term is not intended. Uh, enjoy the free regen in the meantime. So we move on to this eye doom, And I gotta admit, I overestimated exactly how easy this fight would be. Because I kind of forgot about the difference between Chitinous Thorns, which is a 100% chance to bleed, and Static Defense, which is a 15% chance to shock. So notice in that first five hit combo, no shocks. So I notice that and I instantly get thrown a little bit, which is entirely my fault. And I go for basically the wrong heavy punish. And then I clearly do it again. A um, little bit better here, but see the glancing prevents the pause because while his um, while his burst damage cannot be affected by ability accuracy while he's refined, the glancing can. Now, this, of course, doesn't apply to the more automatic glances when his immunities trigger or when buffs end, but the one he gets from light interrupts can be caused to fail by glancing. So I am now extremely happy that he only has one armor up because this fight is not going quite as cleanly as I hoped entirely uh, due to my own mistakes. But yeah, we go for a light intercept there. Um, I try and make a big difference between the interrupt and the intercept because I think a lot of people forget you can do the heavy punishes. But yeah, there we did go for a true intercept because I felt like it was actually pretty helpful to our game plan. We are winning the HP race, but it's basically just this is not as good a fight as the Nimrod one because it's not going perfectly, right? We don't have as much uptime on the pauses. Oh, wow, we just had the, um, the Easter egg show up there. That was interesting. But yeah, we didn't have as much uptime on the pauses, and so we're just losing more health to block damage because he's chunky. Thankfully, we are able to do the medium light medium with the regen. That is helping a little bit. But you're also seeing the limitations of the missing health regen. I think a lot of people like to focus on just how nuts Carl's regen looks on defense when you almost have him down, or on offense after he's just eaten some massive special or something. But when you're just trying to top up, it's only okay, right? And that is also on display in this fight here. So we have let ourselves uh, be pushed above two bars. That is completely okay, because at this point I am just trying to get to the special three. And it doesn't quite do it, so I think I just go for it. Yeah, I go for it rather than let my form expire. Maybe this kills him. Maybe I'll need to land a couple more um, bursts. Not really concerned either way. And there he goes. Nice picturesque finish. All right, so now we move on to the first thing in this war that truly, or no, yeah, the first thing in this war that did truly frustrate me. <laughs> I'm remembering there were multiple things. So this next fight is a rank five thing on node 46, and I thought about bringing a couple different options, but ultimately elected to go with Reed. Apocalypse was another one that was way up there. But basically I brought Reed because I'm just extremely comfortable with Reed. I know he can control the healing. And 
he's also a rank five. I was like, I've fought thing with Reed specifically multiple times this season. I'll be able to manage the rock stacks. That's what matters. Reminder, we do not use the suppression pre-fight because we want to be able to push thing to a bar of power to manage the rock stacks. Otherwise, this gets very scary. Now, one advantage Reed has this season is that although thing is immune to fate seal and we can't deal with the unstoppable that way, He's not immune to neutralize, and so if Reed gets lucky as a subdue attacker, you can actually prevent um, the unstoppable, but you'll notice out of my first nine, ten hits here, I have not gotten any neutralize yet, and so it's not something that I like to um, rely on. Funnily enough, I could have hit him again there. I arguably should have. But I was hoping that he would just throw his special two here. I'm very comfortable with the heavy counter. And then we'd keep our debuffs. But Benny Boy did not want to play. And so he didn't. <laughs> and we've now lost our debuffs. And so at this point, I'm like, cool. Um, I'm going to have to let him stack some block penetration charges. Because I am going to time out to this fight from all the regen playing around his other abilities if I do not get back up to my special two. And I'm probably going to need to do it twice because obviously this is not fully um, controlling him here. Go ahead, hit into his block. Thankfully, this time he does throw it. I'm like, okay, as long as we got that one in, there's a lot of health ahead of us. But if I can hold on to the debuffs, that's what matters. We go for one more heavy here, I think. Yeah, don't want to lose them. He is stacking block penetration charges again. His uh, attack rating is going up due to the fury charges. But thankfully, we're very comfortable with the fact that the special two has three hits. We play around uh, the rock stacks there. We really want him to throw this. But if we can hold on to this many um, pre-fights... This is how I wanted the fight to go, because notice that we are reversing the healing. And that is kind of the core theory of why I was comfortable doing this, because we can dash back twice. We don't have to worry about any of that. See, there it is again. And this is just going to work well for thing. Now, this is clearly a SIG 200 thing, and so while protection is up, which we knew it would be up because Reed's modified attack gets pretty high... Um, we aren't reversing as much, but the important thing is simply that he is not healing. There we go. We're getting really good damage in here while it's being reversed. Um, you also see the block pen charges are adding up like that. That hurt right there. Not going to lie. I get him to throw one more here. Thankfully, I have been fighting thing for a very long time. I'm comfortable with that special one dex in the corner, unblockable or not. We uh, get our heavy counters in, and there we go. So very scary opening to that fight, but still a good assignment, one that I'm very comfortable with. I don't regret sending it. I'm just frustrated with Ben for being mean. Anyway, now we go over to this uh, kingpin. Now, I'm very comfortable fighting Kingpin with almost any Mystic because you just bait a heavy. He throws a heavy, he gets that quick unstoppable, it feeds Mystic Dispersion. You have all the power you could possibly want. I've done it with Doom so many times on so many different nodes. I've sent it so many different times. And so I figured, we'll use Carl and Magma here because we'll get enough power from him throwing heavies to get to our special two. We'll refine... And then we'll be able to turn off the stun shield um, with the incinerates. And that just makes this fight that much more safe, right? Problem being, if Thing just, or sorry, if Kingpin just decides not to throw heavies. See, there's one, because that's the other thing about the heavy, is that it does uh, trigger our pause. There's another. But this is not quite working out the way I was hoping. Honestly, a bit of a miscalculation. But notice that even though I'm saying, eh, this isn't quite going the way I wanted it, and we're about to lose our form, we are still winning the health race, even without any physical resistance in the fight thus far. And so at this point, I just decide, you know what? This is not worth building back up all the way to two bars and trying to maintain it. I'm just going to go to Uru. So we build a little bit more um, 
power here because ideally I would like to get into Uru and then refine for damage. Which also requires him to throw specials, but there we go. We get another one, and now it's going to be easier to block. We can get um, some, some heavies in if he plays ball. Thus far, he has not played ball. Loving his specials. Now, I also could have done that a little bit earlier, but I try not to take that risk. I was really hoping he'd throw a heavy there, but honestly, I dexed out too much. One thing I've noticed with the AI, which matters a lot for somebody like Carl where you're going for heavy dexes, is that I find if I just hold block, they are a bit more likely to throw it. If I am basically kind of renewing my focus, renewing my tap on every block to go like, maybe I dash out here, maybe I dash out here, maybe I dash out here, which is what I would want to do if I'm going for a heavy counter. The AI seems more likely to finish their combo, and that seems on full display here. So I think I tried to modulate that, but Kingpin was also being rude. So again, we're still ahead on the health race. I am not worried, basically, as long as we don't get parried here. But I was hoping this fight would be faster than it is. Notice that instead of just going for heavies, which is um, what I would prefer to be doing, even when he throws his heavy, love that double medium there, even though that triggers a pause, I am also going for the light punish on the heavy because the longer pause from that is very important to us here. I'm also blocking as soon as I finish my combos to try and bait him into a heavy. It has worked a couple times now, like those last two, but he's determined to make this slow, which is why it's nice that it's also not a particularly scary placement. And like I said, this became a hit-them-until-they-fall-over fight. <sighs> I think Absorbing Man is strong enough, but I gotta admit, I have uh, a few times regretted momentarily not pushing to also give him pause credit if he um, punishes a special attack with a light. <laughs> This is probably too much security, given everything else I gave him. But given all my time playing Tigra, it would have been nice. All right, and so let's talk about this next fight. Because if you've seen my last couple videos, you know that I've talked about the fact that I think if you're going to be using Carl for a boss that is not one of his target fights, like, say, Hulkling, you probably want to leave 49 up so you have access to Hazard Shift. It is very clear from this still frame Hazard Shift has been taken down. So why did that happen? Am I a terrible planner? Is not a terrible teammate who took the fight too early and got overzealous? No. The reason this happened is because we have real jobs, and this was on Friday morning, and Na very reasonably told me, he's like, hey man, um, I gotta go into work. I can't guarantee I'll get away. Do we have another option for 49? Or should I take it now and then are you going to be able to handle the boss? And I looked over um, our various options and I basically said, no, I don't think we have an alternate for 49. Take it now. We'll figure out an alternate. And so he did. And then I looked over things and I decided that Although I would have loved on some level to have taken Rintra with Reed, that requires heavy countering the special one. Because heavy countering Rintra's heavy works with a lot of people, but not with Reed. It is not reliable. A single light attack doesn't close the distance reliably. And two light attacks is too slow and he can punish you. I'm not really willing to do that because then I'm relying on AI cooperation, which maybe I should have. Maybe that would have been uh, a good fight. On paper, it makes sense. But after that thing fight and then the kingpin fight, I just really didn't want to roll those particular dice and put my life in the hands of the AI. 
So even though my Immortal Abomination is only rank 3, I had done duels, I had looked over who everybody else had brought, and I decided this is the answer that we have the best chance with. I didn't love it, not gonna lie. But given the Mr. Fantastic pre-fights, given the fact that I-Bomb's Heavy has enough reach to reliably punish Rintras, given that all of the resistances on this node will not make uh, a difference against poison damage, given that this will help mitigate willpower healing, this is what made sense to me. And you will see uh, a lot in here how much it is a very good matchup. But given how much I have hedged all of this, you've probably also already guessed, you're going to see some things that I'm less happy with. So we, of course, are heavy countering every, every chance we get, both after his heavy and after his special one, because we need to control his mystical charges. We just really, really do not want him to go unstoppable, stun immune, unblockable, any of that stuff. So we go straight for the special two, it's possible I should have thrown a special one first, because we are kind of hoping that he throws this special one. Thankfully, he does. Um, we hit into it not with a heavy this time, because his charges were low enough, and because I wanted to be able to do this. I wanted to be able to throw the special one, repause our aura. I knew it would knock him down, and I knew it wasn't likely he would get to 10 and go unstoppable against the wall anyway. I probably didn't need to heavy that because he was already at zero, right? But that is basically what we're doing here. We're throwing the special one. We're doing as much damage off Acid Burn as we can. We're baiting his specials. It is going well. We are basically at full health. Like, this is going incredibly, right? I think right around now is when my dog came into the room and started nosing up against my legs and whining and basically doing everything that, to me, means, okay, if I don't take care of her right now, she is going to drop a load on the carpet. And so that definitely messed with me a bit. I waited longer than I should have to throw that special one, and we lost our debuffs. And so now this fight that was going extremely well is a bit less safe, and Opportunist is starting to catch up with us. You can really feel that block damage, right? So I'm a little bit worried. Um, we are getting backed up because now Rintra has more power. He's getting the full benefit of Mystic Dispersion and of his own power gains instead of the significantly blunted version. Because reminder, I-Bomb's Petrify is, I think, 20%. And then Reed's is 40. So at one point we had three Petrifies up. That was actually an 80% reduction to ability power rate. That was great. Right now we're at a fourth of that. <laughs> and so that's why this is harder, right? That's why it's harder to keep up poisons. That's why he's actually healing from some places in there. And that's why we are getting backed up. Because we're having to spend more time baiting. It is still going well. Um, but yeah, it doesn't feel quite as awesome as it did. Now there I should have heavy countered. I think I was a little bit flustered, because again, reminder, I had a dog that I was worried was about to poop on the carpet, to be completely blunt. And here he goes for a heavy. I immediately go for mine. <sighs> but that's the risk. We, we were close enough to the wall that to fully evade his heavy required us to just be late enough that he was able to parry our heavy via stand your ground. And then I just, I couldn't recover. Between opportunist and the boss nodes, the attack value on those ruptures was too high. We were just, we were dead. As soon as that happened, we were completely dead. There was no way out. And that's unfortunate, because I think that a rank 4 I-Bomb would have cleaned this up. We have a rank 4 I-Bomb available in my battle group, and I just, I didn't put them in the field, because I was like, we're taking it with Carl with Hazard Shift up. That's all we need to do. And I do maintain it would have worked extremely well. Um, additionally, I could have played it better in a couple places. 
a very obvious distraction, but still, um, I could have stayed more on top of it. I could have held on to my debuffs. Even after I lost the debuffs, there are a couple places watching this back where I could have gone for heavy counters and controlled his charges better, and I didn't. I could have hit into his block and backed him up because hitting his block does not give him charges, but can put poisons on him, does build distance. There are things I could have done that I did not do that would have saved that. And so that's a bummer. <sighs> At the same time, I'm not really concerned about it because I know it was not our plan A. I don't even think it was our plan B. The war was already lost when this happened. People have jobs, people have lives. And uh, as a lot of us know, it's not the most fun thing to decide, all right, well, we're calling an audible, take a boss with something you really didn't want to take them with, which is what I did. And so I'm just not gonna beat myself up too much over it. Moving on to the next war, like I already said, this one was a loss. Uh, it wasn't the most embarrassing one, but we definitely dropped some we didn't want to. I believe this puts us five and five, so we have not locked in masters yet. If we win one of the next two, we're in pretty good shape. Ideally, we win both. I think that might give us a chance at top 10, but I haven't run the numbers. But yeah, I'll see you all in that. Hope you enjoyed the Carl fights and the discussion. And until next time, thanks so much for watching, and take care.